Hey guys, Kaylin at Elba Mill Farm. Today's video is going to show you guys how I wash eggs for incubating. Um, I know that's kind of a controversial subject in the chicken world. Most people will say, oh, don't wash your eggs. You remove the bloom and the bloom's necessary to keep them healthy. And that's fine. Um, however, after reading a bunch of poultry studies and it was suggested to me by somebody else who had been doing it for years and told me just to try it once. And so I did. And my hatch rate went through the roof. Um, and I've been doing this now for three going on four years, I think. And so as long as it continues to work for me, that's how I'm going to do it. But I thought I'd go ahead and make the video to show you guys exactly how I do it. There are lots of different ways you can do this, lots of different things you can use. Um, but this is just the way I do it. And the biggest reason I do it is most of my eggs do come out pretty clean. Um, I keep my nest boxes pretty clean. However, I also have ducks, which are filthy little critters. And on really muddy, nasty days, my free rangers will walk through the mud and then jump up in the nest box and cover their eggs with mud that's also mixed with poop. So if I could only incubate the ones that come out perfectly clean, um, the amount of eggs I could hatch would go down drastically. And I set 96 eggs a week, so I need as many good, nice, clean eggs as I can get. Um, one of the reasons people complain about it is the eggs themselves are actually porous. And once you take that bloom off, you've now opened it up to bacteria. If you're not going to sanitize your incubator, then don't do this because that bloom being gone, it won't matter that you sanitize them if you stick them in a dirty incubator. But if you're going to make sure you've sanitized your incubator and that you only touch these eggs after they're clean with your clean hands, you're good. You've, you've put them in a sterile environment and you've wiped out all the bacteria that you can. Um, and this actually will cut down if you try this. Um, you'll notice that if you were having lots of early bacterial deaths, which is that red ring of death that you see when you candle them at about 7 to 10 days, this actually will cut down a whole lot on that. Once I started doing this, I may have one or two out of 96 eggs that has that red ring of death. So this greatly increased the number that, you know, make it to lockdown for me. Um, some people use bleach to sanitize. Some people use Vercon. Um, I use just plain old hydrogen peroxide. And the reason I stuck with the peroxide is first of all, it was what su was suggested to me the first time, but I looked at a bunch of poultry studies and if you Google um, poultry study peroxide, you'll see that there's a lot of studies showing that this is what the big guys do. They sanitize their eggs before they put them in the incubators. And if it works for the big guys, there's no reason it shouldn't work for us small guys. Um, it's not that big a deal. They, the poultry studies actually are using, I think it's 6% peroxide. This is just what you get from the pharmacy. So it's not gonna cost you a lot of money. And it's, it's fairly easy. So what I do is I fill one side with warm water. And then I start sticking my dirty eggs in it. And you use warm water because cold water has been shown to open the pores and allow the dirty water to be sucked in. So if you use water just a little bit warmer than the eggs, it's supposed to cut down on that. I get the eggs in the side that has you know warm water in it there's nothing in this side yet but I have plugged the sink and that's because I'm going to turn this over here I usually wash quite a few eggs um, I usually do it on Thursdays and that's the day I set my hatches um, that way I know that I'm hatching on Thursdays and my chicks will be ready to go for customers on the weekends so I'm gonna move this to this side my peroxide is straight peroxide in this bowl and what I do is Put enough in here to start loosening some of that dirt and then you don't want to scratch it you don't want to use anything abrasive i literally take my wet hands on the wet egg and just twist both hands you know just trying to get off as much of that as i can and then i turn my sink on to just a drip so that i can as i'm rubbing all that off rinse it off and then i stick it in the peroxide bowl and twist it so same thing just Trying to get as much of that off as possible, run it under this. And the reason I put the plug in this is because in a normal week, this is not going to be the amount of eggs I have to wash. I'm going to have substantially more. And so what I do is I wash till this water gets a little gross. 
and then I'll switch the next batch of eggs in this and move my dripping water onto this side and that way I'm saving some water because once you start washing a whole bunch of eggs it starts to get a little expensive and so I get off as much as I can and you're not supposed to use your fingernails or anything rough like that because it can scratch the eggs which I don't know why that matters if you're already taking off the bloom then why it matters if you scratch it um, I don't know but that's what I was told so I've tried to stick to that and then just I do that till I get enough in here I roll them to make sure the peroxide is completely over them and then pointy side down they go into my egg trays which are sterile too um, each week I take these out when a batch goes on lockdown I take them out and I'll bring them to the sink and sanitize them and then my next hatch won't be started for a few days after that so they have a few days of not being in the incubator not having any eggs in on that kind of thing and right now my breeding pens are all mixed well they were all mixed together um, now they're separate but for the next four weeks there's the possibility of them being mixed breeds so I won't mark any of these eggs but normally since I have different breeds and different breeding pens I'll mark the top of each egg with what it is so that I know when it's time for lockdown what is what and I just keep doing this until each tray is full um, you see I have a towel set under there um, I learned the hard way that even though it feels like you're getting most of that off like the water as you pull it out you do not and it'll start to drip everywhere but I mean this is really simple doesn't have to be hard and like I said it it improved my hatch rates the first time I did it I had like a 90 some percent hatch rate and since I had been getting 50 that was a huge difference um, these days sometimes I'm not getting 90 some days I'm averaging I think about 80 percent um, I don't know what I'll average yet this year but so I keep doing that so I get the entire tray full and if as I go I find any that are shaped weird like I'm pretty sure there was one so this one I don't know if you can see it's kind of shaped weird so I actually won't hatch that one and I put those in our eaten egg container um, chicken eggs take 21 days so I'm gonna fill both those trays up with chicken eggs but I also have some duck eggs that I want to do I have somebody waiting on some ducks and they don't care if the eggs are as dark as they should be because they should be pretty dark some of these are pretty light they don't care they just want some ducks um, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually incubate all these but they're gonna have to go in their own separate tray because duck eggs take 28 days to hatch and since I hatch every week what I try to do I stagger hatch and that means these guys will all go on lockdown at the same time and these ducks will actually go on lockdown the same day as next week's chicks so next week when I'm cleaning eggs I'll add them to the tray with the ducks in it that way when I go on lockdown everybody is ready to hatch at the same time um, another thing with the duck eggs because one of the things you're supposed to call for in Cayuga is, is making sure the duck eggs are dark enough and so you can see the color difference in these and I would normally since I, these people don't care what the egg color looks like they just want the ducks but normally I would mark this one as the darkest of the bunch because after they've sat in the incubator for 28 days you can no longer tell who was dark and who was not that color fades so make sure and you can use a black permanent marker um, permanent marker does not hurt the chicks does not hurt the eggs um, it's not a big deal for them but you can mark them however um, make sure when you incubate that you are writing this stuff down because you always think you're gonna remember but if you had any idea how many times I've had to lock down eggs early because I thought I knew when they were going but I wasn't positive and didn't want to risk the babies hatching early that one's really dirty I'll leave that one in a minute but really you just literally take the egg and you can kind of feel on the duck eggs the duck eggs is actually really gross um, they're 
bloom or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's the bloom that makes them feel slimy like that. Duck eggs kind of feel really nasty and I actually will rub those till that slippery feeling comes off uh, just to be sure I'm getting all the bacteria. And then once I have all my eggs cleaned, so get the majority of the poop off, rinse them off, put them in the peroxide, and put them in this. Then I take those straight to the incubator. I don't let them dry necessarily. I mean, I make sure they're not dripping because I have to walk across the carpet. But I don't worry about drying them or anything like that. But you do have to remember, your incubator has to be sterile. Um, I sterilize mine with bleach. And in 18 days when these go on lockdown, I'm actually going to do a video about how I clean my incubators, the styrofoam ones. Because these are actually going in my cabinet, but I hatch in the styrofoam. And so once these are ready to go on lockdown, I'll show you what I use for that, which is just bleach um, and sunshine. If I can take them outside and let them sit in the sun for a while, I do that. Um, but you just get them clean, sterilized, in the thing, and ready to go. And it's cheap. I mean, I think I pay 88 cents for this. And I've probably only used about that much. I put it in a bowl when I keep reusing it. If it gets really gross looking, I'll dump it out. And I'm sure I could probably order it in bulk online. Um, I'm not gonna. But my hatch rate went from 50%, and it wasn't because I got better at it. I had been hatching for over a year when I finally tried this. I tried it on the very last hatch of the season because I figured I had nothing to lose. And the woman was like, just try it, just try it. And so I did, and I like it. Now, whether or not you'll have the same results, I don't know. But if you have a hatch that you're willing to test it on, maybe some cheap eggs, seriously try it and, and educate yourself. There are a ton of studies out there showing, and I'm not going to say that this is true, but one of the studies I read from a large poultry study said that the peroxide actually is absorbed into the egg and kills something like 90% of salmonella in the egg itself. Like, not just on the outside, but in the egg itself, which means technically you reduce the chances of your chicks hatching with salmonella. So while I'm not going to say that that's the case. That's what the study said, and you can read it and find it yourself. But I mean, if the big guys are doing it, and they're all about dollars and the most hatches and all that, if they're doing it, it has to be working. So give it a try. Holler at me if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And in 18 days, I'll show you how I do the incubator. Thanks, guys. Bye.